Here is our next example of a sinusoidal application problem. We're going to do the harmonic swing. Spring. Oh, went up too far. All right. So imagine, I kind of think of this like a slinkies. You know how slinkies, they kind of go back and forth. What we're doing is a coiled spring. You pull it down, and it pops back up. Pull it down, it pops back up. Okay? Um, it is pulled down to a distance of 20 centimeters. So we're going to go down 20 centimeters from its equilibrium, so the, the zero, and then it's released. The time for one complete oscillation, oscillation like revolution, is um, four seconds. Give the equation to model the position at time of t. So we're going to try to come up with what the equ equation is, either a sine or cosine function. That's what we're focusing on. And then where would the spring be when we let it go and it's gone for 1.2 seconds? So that's our, our objectives here. So what I've done is I've kind of just uh, drawn a little picture here of imagining here's your spring going down 20, up 20, down 20, up 20. And you go two seconds, and then at four seconds, you're, you completed it. So it comes down, it goes back up, and it has to be back to its original place after four seconds. We're going to go ahead and graph this. So we've already set up the graph for you. So think about time of zero. So when we initially start, what are we going to do? We're going down here. It's going to be pulled down, and then we're going to let it go. So at time of zero, we're down negative 20. And then when we're all done, it has to be back here again, right? One revolution. So can you imagine what's going to happen at one second? At two seconds, it's at the top. It's sprung up, right? To the top. What's happening at one second? It's at zero. And then at three seconds, it's back to zero. So imagine it's pulled down. It's going to spring all the way back up to the top and to the bottom. So we'll continue doing that. So there's a pretty graph. Which trig function would you choose here? If this is the shape of the graph we gave you, would you choose the sine or the cosine? If it were me, I would choose the cosine. Because remember, the sine has to start in the middle. So we want to choose the cosine function. So we have to identify the pieces to the cosine function, the amplitude, the period, the D, how does it move up or down? The phase shift, left or right? And we're going to do that on the next slide. All right, so we're going to find the equation of the cosine. Let's have a moment here and do the amplitude first. I'm hoping now you've had a little bit of time to think about amplitude. We've practiced this a while. I'll give you about 10 seconds to maybe see if you can figure out what would be the amplitude. Now, some of you probably can do it graphically. Yeah, Alex. Um, how do you, in the equation you model that it's being pulled down, but it's like, it's not actually at the position? Or? That would be the position of it. So it starts off, like we're starting off at zero seconds, is at the bottom, and then we let it go, springs up, it goes back down. Would that be drawn as a whole in the graph? No. Did you get an amplitude of 20? Did you get that? Did you get it graphically or algebraically? So if you did it algebraically, remember it's your maximum minus your minimum divided by 2. So the maximum was 20 up. The minimum was 20 down. So negative, negative turns this to a positive 40 divided by 2 is 20. All right, the next thing, the period. How long in time is one period, one revolution, one oscillation? Four seconds, right? 
So if we want to find the B, we say period equals 2 pi over B. We're going to substitute our 4 in for P. Solve it for B. So we'll multiply both sides by B. Divide it by 4. And then reduce it by 2. So our B is 1 half. Now, did you see on our graph any shift up or down? Do you see it? Are you picking this up at all? No. We're also not moving it left or right. But we do have our cosine function starting at the bottom. So what is our amplitude, our A value going to be? It has to be a negative, since this is a reflection. All right. So we'll go back then. Our A value is negative 20. And our C and our D don't exist. We did push it up or down, left or right. All right, so we're set to write our equation. So our A value, we said, is negative 20 cosine our B value over 2, and then x. Now if we wanted to write it as a function, you could say distance of time, negative 20, cosine of pi over 2, and then time. The last part of the given information is they wanted us to know where on the graph would be 1.2 seconds. So we could probably estimate it, right? Where it would be. So here is one second and here is two seconds. 1.2, maybe about there. Looks like maybe it's about seven just from our graph. About seven centimeters up. Let's check it. So how we check it is we can do this algebraically. <coughs> we can use that equation y or d of t, negative 20 cosine <coughs> of pi over 2 and then 1.2. Now we're going to have to use our calculator to complete this. So negative 2, 0 cosine, 1.2 pi over 2. We're going to have to plug this into our calculator. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. I'm sorry, radian mode. So we say the cosine <coughs> of 1.2 pi divided by 2. We get an answer of negative 0.309. You multiply that by negative 20. And our y value is at 6.18 centimeters. We thought it was about 7, didn't we? We were pretty close. We thought it was about 7. So that is at 1.2 seconds.